unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Prince of God is here. My hallelujah belongs to you. 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 You deserve it. You deserve it.
cut off her heart. And then she went back to the grounds where she had received Jesus. And this song was sung and the hands were raising up. And the story says, her arm grew. This was not somebody worshipping in joy. She Let things start coming to life in the name of Jesus. Let the things that have not been working start to work in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. Give you all 
heaven, God, I worship you. Tell your neighbor the Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 39 from the seventh verse. Genesis 39 from the seventh verse. 
if you're there, say amen. We're going to read a story. And uh, tonight's sermon is going to be very interesting, but you'll understand why I'm going to share it. Somebody say amen. The Bible says, it came to pass up to these things that his eyes, sorry, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Somebody say amen. And she said, lie with me. Don't translate it for the young children. She said, lie with me. If your child asks you, what is that mommy telling me lying? Telling lies. So it came to pass one day, after those things, that the master's wife, Potiphar's wife, cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. And the Bible says, but he refused and said to his master's wife, see here with me in the house my master has concern about nothing. He has put all that he has in my care. He is not greater in this house than I, than I am, nor has he kept anything from me except you, for you are his wife. How then can I do this great evil and sin against God? She spoke to Joseph day after day. That means she could have made a cord. But he did not listen to her to lie with her or to be with her. Then it happened about this time that Joseph went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the men of the house were indoors. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment into her hand and fled and got out of the house. And when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled away, she called to the men of her household and said to them, Behold, he, your master, has brought in a Hebrew to us to mock and insult us. He came in where I was to lie with me, and I screamed at the top of my voice. And when he had heard me screaming and crying, he left his garment with me and fled and gone out of the house. And she laid upon his garments by her until his master came home. Imagine, she laid upon, uh, up his garment by her until the master came home. And then she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought among us came to me to mock and insult me. And when I screamed and cried, he left his garment with me and fled out of the house. And then Joseph's master had the words of his wife saying to him, this is the way your servant, your servant treated me. His wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the state prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord, the Bible says, was with Joseph and showed him mercy and loving kindness and favor. Somebody say amen. You're going to enjoy tonight. How many of you have heard this story for the first time? You're listening to it for the first time. Put up your hands. Don't fear. We're all going to heaven. Okay. A couple of you. A story is given of one Hebrew boy born by one gentleman called Jacob who has a covenant with God. And one of them is Joseph. Of the children, of the sons he has, one of them is Joseph. I think they were 11 then. And then the Bible tells us that the father Jacob, Israel, loved Joseph greatly. You're listening to me? And one day he bought him a coat of many colors. Some of you know the story. And then he is sent to send food to the brothers. He had gone to send his brothers food. But the brothers were envious of Joseph because of the favor the father bestowed on him. Somebody say amen. And grew with envy and jealous. They wanted to kill this fellow. But one of them, I believe Judah, told them, no, this is our blood. We can't shed it. And then they settled for selling him into slavery by some merchants from Egypt. And before we know it, he is sold or thrown in a ditch from the ditch. He goes into uh, a, a cell, uh, and then after selling him off, the story tells us he's in prison. He's, he's, he's taken into the household of Potiphar. Now, the story, the story tells us that in the household of Potiphar, the Bible says, if you begin in the verse 39, the Bible says, the Lord was with Joseph and his master saw it. His master realized it. Praise the Lord. He, when, when Potiphar started to look at this boy, he started to see that there was God on him and that there was favor in him. And what happens? The Bible says he put him in charge. No, not that. The verses before. 
has been for some before. Verses 3. He says, And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to flourish and succeed in his hand. So, everything Joseph touched, it succeeded. Oh, that's a man with favor. That's a man who has the hand of the Lord upon his life. When a man has the hand of the Lord upon his life, everything he puts his hands on, it, it finds favor. It prospers. Somebody say, I'm favored. Say, I have the hand of God on me. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody say, I have the hand of God on me. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, you can't have the hand of the Lord upon you and prosperity is not in your hands. Like, oh, these prosperous preachers, they're preaching prosperity, but it's a result of the hand of God on a man. Hello? If you, you have the hand of God on you, even if you're funny, prosperity will come automatically. Praise the Lord. Everything you will touch, it shall prosper by your hand. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. And so he puts him in charge of his household. And this guy was supposed to tend the household. He was the boss, servant of the house. And so, Potiphar's wife looks at Joseph, praise the Lord, and now she gets a mystery. So, if you read the story, the Bible says she pestered him many times. It wasn't a one-time affair. Every time she was telling the guy, come and we share some juice, what? You know. And then Joseph says, no, but I'm fasting. So, th there was... <laughs> there was woe. You know, the, the, the guy was fast fighting. And then one fateful day, the demons multiplied by a thousand. And then this time, Joseph is in trouble. She makes sure that the household, that the other servants are not around, right? And then she tries to force him into line with him. You see? And the story tells us, like you've heard, Joseph escapes. He says, no, I can't do this to God, you know? And the story tells us when Joseph escapes, she remains with her garment. And she calls on the young man, come and see what this guy has done. He wanted to lie with me. He tried to rape me. Da, 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 da. And then, wh where is the proof? Ah, wh what is this garment doing with me? You understand what I'm saying? And you know, to, to actually, to, to, to appreciate the spirit of this woman, eh? the Bible says she lay with the garment the whole day, like this, waiting for Potiphar. <laughs> let us, no, 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 no. But mommy, let us, no, no. I want my husband. To what? To see it. This is my fear. My fear was that maybe she feared that Joseph was going to tell on her. And so she said, why don't I tell on him before I? He tells on me, you know. Joseph is in a situation. He did not put favor on himself. He woke up and he was favored. He didn't choose favor. He didn't ask his father to love him. The story is clear before that, that he never went to his father and told him, Dad, love me more than the rest of my brethren. Are you listening? But here is a man in a situation that he was not responsible for. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. He is uh, hated by his brethren, his own blood, brothers. He did nothing. He was just a favored guy. And they are moved with envy and jealous. And you ask them, why are you having a problem with the boy? Ah, uh ah, -uh. father loves him a lot. You, you get my point? This is something that the man had nothing to do. You know, he didn't choose to be Joseph. You see what I'm saying? He's put in a pit. He didn't choose that pit. There was nothing in the, in the old story that really qualified him for the pit. He's put in a household as a slave, yet he has a father and a family where he can run. And he still finds himself in a situation that he did, was not of his making, but he's there. You're hearing me? 
And then as he's working as a slave fellow, even when the hand of the Lord is on him, again another chickadee is funny on him. It's not also his do- doing that he was hard, you know. And then she makes a move on the guy. He refuses. She gets his garment. And then, before you know that, Potiphar comes back. He's angered at what Joseph has done. He's thrown in prison. And it's still not his fault. Are you hearing me? And like I've said once or twice in a sermon before, a couple of years, if Joseph lived in 2017, he would be having a spirit of rejection. It followed you when you were a child. When your father favored you. Imagine your own brothers, they threw you in a what? In a pit. And then after the pit, you went into Potiphar's house. And in Potiphar's house, you're already in prison. You're being imprisoned. And then he's my interpreter. Dreamer. You, you understand? I, I say that one time or twice or three times. That If Joseph lived in 2017, many of our preachers would say, Joseph has a spirit of rejection. But Joseph wasn't rejected. Joseph was favored. That is why he attracted a certain attention. Are you hearing me? Now, some of you maybe have not been there. Yet. Some of you maybe have been in this state. I'm talking about. Or some of you, you will be there one day. Even if you say God forbid. I'll explain why I'm saying that. Okay, maybe let me give you scripture. Such that I satisfy your consciences. <laughs> Who will you? Praise the Lord Jesus. Mark chapter 10 verses 29. Give me the Amplified Bible. Some people say, oh, God use me. Me, I am available. You even see brother Julius, he doesn't pray, but me Lord. Me, I'm always praying every Thursday. On Sunday, I'm in your presence. On Tuesday, I'm in your presence. But Brother Robert, for him, he doesn't come every time. But me, I love you. Use me, you know. Now, the Bible says, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has given up and left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands or for my sake and for the Gospels. The Bible says, next verse, Who will not receive a hundred times as much now in this time? Houses in this time, not in heaven. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions. Welcome to the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. That means the moment God starts to restore what you lost, because you, somebody can pay those guys their evening wages, you know. And then they go home. It's for the day. So we're going to pay them. Now, listen. The persecutions are as a result of the restoration of a hundredfold on the man's life. This is not a spirit of rejection. No, 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 no. Everything is working for a certain good. You... You don't even know why, but it is working for a certain good. But nothing outside physically can show that the man is in a harvest. And that is why persecution is coming. The sister is in a harvest. That is why uh, rejection is coming. Oh, if somebody said uh, lies on me, they lied about me, I, there was nothing I did, and then I just woke up and then they were uh, accusing me. Listen. Don't forget the other side of the story. And the Bible says that the prophecy might come true. That they hated him. John 15, 25. Without a cause. Jesus, the son of God. The son of the living God. Who knew no sin. Wronged no man. Insulted nobody. Had no individual. He woke up in a state where he was hated by men. I told somebody that even though it seems as simple as can be, up to today, every time I play the picture of getting a a murderer, a guy who has been uh, taken to prison, 
because he's a thief and a murderer, and they put him up there and they tell him, between Jesus and the thief, who do you choose? <laughs> and these men choose a thief and choose to crucify the Lord of glory. There is something so wrong with the world. Christians. There is something so wrong with the world. Whoever knew that the same people who are taking this fellow to prison because he's the thief, he's the murderer, can look at him and compare him with a man that knew no sin. And they would rather exchange the man that was a killer and murderer and take the man with no sin to the cross. Think about it. Just think about it for a moment. And that's the world we are in. The present evil world. Wickedness works in the hearts of people. And sometimes the devil doesn't lose people far from you. No. They are not those people who... No, no. Some of them, they are nearer than you than you first believed. In Psalm 55, I believe, verses 21, he says, Their mouths are smoother as butter, but there is war in their hearts. And their words are softer than oil, yet they draw swords. They're, they're, see, this is, this is the psalmist lamenting, going through situations. And I'm going to come to that later. You, you are not the first one to be in a situation like that. For any man, the Bible says, that is going to live godly in Christ, he shall suffer persecution. If you want to come out of the godly court, then you have to become political. And if you become political, there's a protection that will come on you. It will look like blessing. But in its own, it is because there's a certain thing that is not upon your life. Somebody say amen. He says that for any man, all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus, they shall all... If you have not seen a form of persecution in your life, Mama, uh, receive Jesus today. Anybody who says, I'm going to live godly in Christ, you're going to suffer persecution. The devil can come up through your wife. The devil can use your husband. The devil can use your boss. The devil can use the person you're working with. The devil can use your best friend. The closest you know. The devil can use your mother. The devil can use your father. He can use your grandfather. You understand what I'm saying? It happens. It happens. It happens. Now, look at Joseph in a situation where there is even proof the woman has the garment. Have you ever been in a situation where all proof is available? On an innocent man. And he's even said, do I have a witness? Everything seems like they're not lying. It's true. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Put up your hands if you've ever been in a situation where almost all proof shows that you're guilty. But between you and God, you know that there's nothing you ever did. Between you and God. That is why I told people, you, you know those, 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 um, those, those distinctions that give you function, name, and place before God? When you understand who you stand before and who you are in God, okay? You will reach a certain place where no man can defend you in certain things. You see, there are people who can rail up defenses. Oh no, this is not true. I don't believe. Listen, you can get to a point where your lawyer can't defend you. Your best friend can't defend you. Even the person you believe in wants to defend you, but they don't have proof enough to get you out. And you look at your life, and you're like, what did I do to get here? And honestly, there was nothing you did to get there. Then you start silencing. Oh, I think I have a demon on my spirit. I think they bewitched me. This must be my auntie. <laughs> did you get it? Tell somebody I'm favored by God. Are you following what I'm trying to say? So, 
Joseph is in a situation where the garment is available. He's in prison waiting for this vindication. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in prison waiting for his what? His vindication. He's praying. He's believing. He's fasting. And then he interprets a man's vision. And then he, he, he tells the man, this is what is happening. Uh, you know, remember the, the chief butler and the what? And then he interprets one man, both men's dreams. One man is, is sentenced to prison, and, I mean to death. And another man goes, uh, is released unto the king. And then later the king, you see. And, and, and this man is, is in prison praying one day. I believe that when Joseph is in prison, he is praying to God that for adventure, this woman one day will come out and tell the truth. Ah, they might never. Use flash. Potiphar's wife never told the truth. It is not written in scripture that Potiphar Later, got to know the truth of what Joseph did. Now, go into that, that day of Joseph and imagine people who are walking in prison and observing this guy. Is that a guy you want to do? It's a guy. Ah, stay away from me, stay away from me. You, you want to know? Yeah, yeah, he boss. He's walking in prison. Are you listening? And, 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 and there are people who are saying, this guy wanted to rape, rape rapist. So this is probably like another random guy singing, rapist, 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 rapist. The, the, the tabloids are writing on the internet. Joseph attempts to rape Potiphar's. And then there are those street women on the corners who have nothing to do. You know those women, there are women who just know how to talk. Do you understand I, and mostly in saloons. I don't know the demon spirit in saloons. Can you believe? What? That guy. Just, oh my, just, eh, eh, Joseph. But don't tell anyone. Shh. Then even yellow one tells you. I was talking to her. Eh? And then she told me. But are you going to keep it as a secret? Yes. Joseph. Be one Joseph be one Tombuza. And then this person keeps on pestering. Come on, tell me. No, 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 no. You are not able to handle. You know, they are provoking them to provoke them to tell them. Do I have a witness? And then they start releasing mysteries. In, in parts. Have you been around people like that? Then they say, hmm. You, you, you think where is he? <laughs> I don't know where he is. He? You don't know that Joseph is in prison? Do you know I don't know that? I didn't know. <gasps> Joseph is in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joseph is in prison. You didn't know that. He, welcome to the world. Joseph is in prison. He, what is he doing there? Ah, leave me. You mean you don't know what he's doing in prison? <laughs> Go Google Joseph prison. Then the person Googles. But I don't see, I don't see anything. Anyway, there's a certain lady he wants. You know the whole story. But you, you are cutting bits by bits by bits by bits by bits. Then the other one is like, oh. Stay away from what? Joseph. But no. They might be lying. You also know women these days. She might have moved, made a move on the guy. Presumption. And then the guy ran away and then they accused him. No. The woman had the garment. <laughs> the garment was what? Available. Now, honestly, can Potiphar's, Potiphar's wife lie? That kind of credibility. By the way, I know that woman. I went with her to high school. Mm, that woman has never lied. Mm. I don't know Joseph, but I know Potiphar's wife. That woman, I can vouch for her. I can even put my left hand. She can't lie. I hope I'm communicating. If you haven't seen it, wait when you start walking in a hundredfold blessing. 
You'll understand what I'm saying. Somebody say amen. Now, of course, I'm seeing the street talk. Oh, Joseph, Joseph, oh, Joseph, Joseph, oh, Joseph. Prison, Joseph, Joseph, oh, Joseph, Joseph. People, that Hebrew boy, that Hebrew boy. I think you, you, you heard how she called him. The Hebrew boy, the, the Hebrew boy, the, the Hebrew boy, the Hebrew boy. And, and so, you are imagining you're in prison. You cannot explain to people that, listen, this is bigger than just finding this woman with a garment. I was thrown by my brother in a ditch. They almost took my life. It was, it was only not for the conviction on Judah's heart. I, I would have died in that. This is bigger than this issue that they are putting on me. And then Joseph goes in his face and puts his face forward to say, you know what, God? You know I was taking this guy's food when they threw me in the pit. You know that I was in the household very faithful. Your hand was upon me and uh, the household of my master's purpose. You know I'm in this prison cell for having refused. If I had said, yeah, maybe... I'll still be faithful before my master. But I'm here in a situation where I did not wish, I didn't intend myself to be there. I don't even know how I got there. All I know is that there is nothing in this story that can vindicate me because all evidence seems to be pointing to me. And I'm thinking, Joseph wants to make it a smaller deal about him, become a little bit selfish, and get so inclined to the vindication of God than the bigger purpose and picture for why the Lord let it happen. One time I was in the U.S., I was gone, I'd gone preaching. And then, some, somebody sends me a silly article. Fanero pastor reps girl in church. I was shocked. I look at the article, this guy, I don't, he's not even a pastor, I don't know him. I've never seen him. But they were saying, Fanero You get it? Maybe guys had already started calling me many weeks ago. Oh, you we want to talk to you? We have matter on you. We have data. I said, okay, right. But they're not writing. And then one day they write, they put a guy's picture. I see this guy, and I'm like, this guy, I don't know him. I don't even know. I've never met him. I, I don't know his face. But he was called Fanero Pastor. And I remember during that time, it didn't really move me, but I was concerned. I said, God, how? What can we do about this? And the Holy Spirit tells me something. The Lord tells me, ignore it, I'll kill it. And I ignored it and he killed it. He killed it. He literally killed it. I don't know why whoever wrote chose to write that. You get my point? But there was no way we could also start setting ourselves on the defense of, no, they are lying. You, you, you get my point? And that's when the Lord told me something about sometimes learning to look at the bigger picture amidst the crisis. I learned this by God that sometimes they might never present evidence to get you out. But God will surely create an event that will make you bigger than any accusation. You didn't get what I just said. You might never find evidence to get you out. But God will surely put a testimony on your life that will override every accusation they've ever put on your life. When famine hit Egypt, it hit Potiphar's wife too, including Potiphar. Somebody shout hallelujah. The guy has a dream. And this guy who is in prison for raping supposedly a woman is the only man who can eat. Mama, God has a way of creating opportunity to get you out of something without necessarily doing it your way. Somebody sound hallelujah. Maybe the people who died in Joseph's day, some died without having known the truth, but everybody ate on the guy's hand. You don't get what I just said. There are things you might, that might, you might never come out of a certain way. Are you hearing me? There are things sometimes we hear and I'm like, God, by the time you let this one come out, you're preparing me a bigger glory. I don't know how. I don't know where it's going to pass from. But let me keep my eyes fixed on you, the author and the finisher of my faith. 
knowing very well that you who began a good work in, if you indeed began, you shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. Maybe they might never come out of vindication. Maybe Potiphar's wife might never confess. But Pharaoh will dream a dream. That no man can interpret. Until they get to 11 and say no. By the time this guy interprets it. By the time the Lord trusts him with the ability to interpret. You see, sometimes, oh, 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 oh. Let me read for you something in Luke. Let me read for you something in Luke. Luke. Luke chapter 21, verses 12. This is part of the prophecy of the end times of the things that shall befall the church. He says, before all this, that all this is talking about the pestilences and none of the wars, the rumors of war and famine and plague and all these things. He says, before all of these, the Bible says, they shall lay hands on you. Now see how God does it. They shall lay hands on you, persecute you, deliver you to the synagogues, of course with accusations, into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And the next verse says, and it shall turn to you. No, let them attack you. No, no, let them say. And the next verse, I love the next verse. It says, so settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. Don't even, don't even meditate. The next verse says, for I will, listen, give you a mouth, I love this, and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, no resist. You know, you're, you're going to speak irresistibly. You understand? <laughs> they accuse you, the Lord makes you wiser. <laughs> they accuse you, the more the Lord makes you wiser. They say things on you, the Lord gives you a wiser mouth. Woo! Until they get to say, nah, hey, Neda, even if we accuse the Kagai, he's deep. <laughs> Laugh at the devil for two seconds. <laughs> That's why on every attack on your life, raise up your hands and say, Father, I thank you for the wisdom bestowed on my spirit. Thank you for the mouth that my adversary cannot gain say against, nor resist. When you're in that situation, eh, flood you with mystery that he doesn't even allow you to meditate. You didn't get what I just said. When you're in that situation, God floods you with mystery that he does not even allow you to first meditate. No. He starts throwing it on you. Are you hearing me? Wiser, 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 deeper, 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 deeper. <laughs> that is why when these attacks come on you, separate yourself and start thanking God. Dance. Are you hearing me? Celebrate God and say, Makata Rikosta. If they throw you in one thing, God will always create an event to get you out of it. Without necessarily vindicating you the way you think. Joseph's story was, listen, the Bible tells us when famine hit, it hit the whole world. Joseph thought it was about him and Potiphar's wife. No. Joseph, it's not about you and Potiphar's wife. That's a small equation in the bigger sum. The bigger picture is that you're going to feed a whole, actually the whole world. Because when famine hit, even the brethren in, in, which were in Israel came to Egypt for food. The whole world, literally, the whole world came flooding to eat Joseph's food. The man who raped. You get my point? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Do, do, you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Me, I thought God was going to take, get Potiphar's wife and then twist her head and flip it the other way. No. Let me get this guy out of prison, make him governor, even over Potiphar. And he's 
Some of you, these words you're hearing on your life, they're just positioning you for promotion. That is why I advise you, don't interrupt when they speak. Uh-uh. Don't, uh, now they spoke about me, even me, I'm going to speak. No, no. When they start speaking, shh. The Bible says you'll not even, no, let me show you some. First Peter chapter 4, verses 6, 14. Give me the message Bible. First Peter chapter 4, verses 14. Now, listen. He says, if you are abused because of Christ, count yourself rejected. He said, count yourself rejected. What did he say? What did he say? Count yourself what? Fortunate. Fortunate. Are you hearing me? And he says, it's the spirit of God and Christ in you that brought you to the notice of others. <laughs> Why do you think they threw David in it? There was something on him. Somebody said the spirit of Christ and of glory is upon my life. That's why you're rejected. You don't have a, a spirit of rejection. No. Glory is on you. Glory is on you. Hey, why me? Why me? But why me? Why is it that me, I'm the one who goes and then they say things about me? Why again me the... Glory. Let me tell you. You can be in the world and people never notice you. You can be in the world and nobody even notices you for anything. Mm -hmm. You are like, you are like, you know those blank tiles of scrubble. You can give them an elevator. <laughs> but when you get to a point where a man can't resist to notice you, where even if he turns this side, he has Fanero, he has your name. You understand? <laughs> I, am, I am encouraging somebody now the Bible says if they are on you because you broke the Lord disturb the peace that's a different matter boss don't disturb the peace that's a different matter but if it's because you're a Christian listen to what the Bible tells you don't Give a second thought. Don't. Be proud of the distinguished status reflected in the name of Jesus. Don't, don't say, no, you're losing appetite. Be, oh, you know, back in those days, I remember when I was a little boy there, many, many years ago when I started the gospel. Man, I used to be affected. But as I started to grow, eh, I just realized, wait, I've gone through all these things and I'm still a vic- Wait a minute. More than a conqueror. You get to a point where you learn to switch off. Now, even if they say you killed a person, you just say, <laughs> then you go. <laughs> One time, many, many, I think last year or something, somebody phoned me and told me, but Apostle, I hear people saying things. What's your take on the things they say? So I told the man of God, I thought you hear God. You, also, you want to hear my side of the story? He says, yeah, I told him no. <laughs> I, can't, I can't give you my side of the story. He asked me why. Because I'll also look like the other ones. You see what I'm saying? I'll also look like? Because I'll, ab- I'll, I'll accuse. Don't give it a second thought. Don't give it a second thought. Don't give it a third. Don't. Just hold your peace. The more they speak, the more you fix your eyes on the one who called you. Are you hearing me? They, it, by the way, it's hard to keep quiet. When you have a vault of evidence also. It's easier when you don't have evidence. But it's harder when you have evidence. Praise the Lord Jesus. It spells a certain spirit of maturity. You get my point? It spells a certain spirit of maturity in God. To say, God, I'll trust you. Whether in what they are saying I'm right or wrong, you're still God. You know me. 
Let me show you something in the Psalm, Psalm 41. I, I, I want to explain what I mean by that. In Psalm 41, we have a situation where the psalmist, I think, begin from verse 5. Give me the Amplified. Psalm 41, I think, verse 5. He sp- says, one time this guy wakes up. You know why I'm giving you all these examples? I want to show you that you're not the first one. And you're not going to be the last either. So this guy says, my enemies speak evil of me, saying, when will he die? Banange. Eh, eh? I didn't even think about it. Let me first think about it. Medi- Wait. Somebody, do you know there are people in this world who are saying, no, waka fadi. Do you know people, there are people who, who they have prophesied on, that one. I give him two weeks. If I be a man of God, I give that one three months. <laughs> Oh God! Me, I don't give people days because I've seen God prolong men's days. I don't. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, imagine a situation. The, the guy's enemies are speaking evil of him saying when he will die and his name perish. Now, this happened to a man after God's own heart. You get my point? Now the Bible says, and when one comes to see me, he speaks falsehood and empty words, while his heart gathers mischievous gossip against me. Imagine, somebody comes to talk to him, but he's gathering gossip. To go and what? And when he goes away, he tells it what? Abroad. Now how can he come except he comes like a friend? You see what I'm saying? And the next verse says, all who hate me whisper together about me against me. Do they devise my heart, imagining the worst for me? There are people who... Eat. When they sit there, they see you in a car accident. They see you, and they have arrested you with cocaine. They see you, and your ministry has died. There are people like that. Go for them. Eh? Every time they close their eyes like this, they sing, your marriage is failing. They, that's what they see. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, And they called him an evil disease, say they. is poured upon him, and cleaves fast to him, and now he is bedfast. He will not rise again. These are men. Even my own familiar, listen, familiar friend in whom I trusted. He says, relied on and was confident. Who ate of my bread and has lifted up his heel against me. This, 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 this happened to David. And the next verse says, but you, O oh Lord, be merciful and gracious to me and raise me up that I may requite them or requite them. Or in other words, that I might show them something one day. Give the message of that. The message of the Bible says, God give grace. Get me up on my feet. I'll show them a thing or two. In other words, he was saying, a time has to come where you have to do something that will silence them. And he will do it for you. God can do something that can silence. Listen, the day Joseph, and I'm going to come back to that, was called to interpret the king's dream. The whole world forgot that he was in prison for a crime. It, that was the last time we ever heard of it. Something rose up on that fellow that killed every conviction that took him in prison the first day. God is gracious. Some of you, a time is going to come where God is going to not for today. God is going to pour something on your life. That wherever you've been held, people are going to look back and they can't accuse you anymore. Somebody say amen. Message, let's continue. He says, this is what I say. By, by this I know that you favor and delight in me. I know it. Because my enemy does not triumph over me. That's how he knows. He knows that even though they were attacking him, there was still no victory in the enemy's camp. And the next verse, that means even though they fight, God won't let them win. But the persecutors never win. And here's the funniest thing I've seen. When a man starts fighting you and he starts going down, and the more he fights you, he starts to go down. And he doesn't have common sense. This is not mystery or revelation. He doesn't have common sense to look back and say, actually, from the time I started to fight this man, I started to go down. No. Such guys, even if they hear me preaching, they'll continue going down until they're... You get my point? Until there are no more. You, you get my point? As for me, you have upheld me. Give me the message. 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 
You know me, he said, inside out. You know. This is the psalmist telling God, he, but if I might not know me. But he says, but you know inside out, you hold me together. He says, you never fail to stand me tall in your presence so I can look you in the eye. This is a man in the middle of testation. But God is saying, I'll still stand you up in my presence. You still behold my eye because I know you inside out. I'll never fail to cause you to stand amidst all these trials. And the next verse says, blessed is God, Israel's God, always, always. And the guy says, yes, yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. David, I mean, Joseph wakes up one day and is governor. Somebody say amen. And Potiphar is not anywhere. Potiphar's wife is not anywhere. The prison guards are not anywhere. The circles are not on his leg. And he's feeding a nation. He sleeps with our fathers when many people in his generation did not know the truth of that matter but had buried it except that there was a testimony that came and overread or over, over, there's a testimony that comes and overrides the accusation that was put on him. And then years later when it almost looks like it's over in his generation Moses sees the story the way it was. The way it was. Up to today, we don't know Potiphar's wife's name. But we know Joseph. We know Ephraim and Manasseh. Your name will live longer than your accusers. And you get to a state one day where they will not be remembered. But for some reason, in that day, there's going to be a judgment that will come well long after. And it will say, no, this one was the right one. But we don't remember even the one who wronged him. Oh, I'm preaching to Rike Terebrostas. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you this. And I tell you as a man who has seen God. I'm not boasting in that. I'm humbled. When you say God use me, some of you don't know what you're asking. When you melt your face and affections before the master to tell him, break me, bend me, kill me, anoint me, separate me for the work you're calling me. I don't think many of you have a clue. The things that you must suffer. That is why when Sim, uh, Sim was it Ananias, the prophet, the apostle, go, is sent to Paul. He says, I'm come to open thine, thine eyes. And that I might show thee the things you must suffer for the sake of the gospel. In the earlier verses, he says that I am now on my way to Jerusalem, but now the Spirit bears me weakness that bounds are awaiting me, or oh, even death. This is Paul telling you that bounds are awaiting me, or oh, imprisonment. The Holy Spirit was always bearing witness in him. That even though you're sent to preach to Jerusalem, expect death or imprisonment. But Paul is saying, but I regard not my life yet still. Because the mandate on my life is way bigger than what I expect now. You think he's just going to go into prison, he's just going to enter Jerusalem and they imprison him? No. Blasphemies. False accusations. Count accusations in him. The mistake you can make is also to start stating your side of the story. I'm not the one who stole. No. They are if you know you're not, shut up. Allow God to what? Make Pharaoh dream. And he will dream. He will dream. I've realized that some people are made wiser because of persecutions. The Lord gives them mouths of wisdom because of persecutions. The Lord gives them epilusis, the Greek word. The ability both to interpret and the wisdom to apply what is interpreted. 
Because it was one thing for Joseph to have the ability to interpret the dream. But it was another for him to have the ability to apply the interpreted dream. Pharaoh tells him, for a truth I see no man in whom the spirit of God is like you. For now I appoint you over my estate to do as you please. Because even though you have interpreted the dream, and I believe it, I don't know how to make it happen. And I've realized that every time I meet a, you meet a man who both knows how to interpret and execute what is interpreted, that man has been somewhere. That man has been somewhere. Do you know how many dreams are interpreted, but they don't have the wisdom to apply the interpreted? Oh, I dreamt I was going to be rich. Oh, yes, it's true. The interpretation is that God is going to give you money. But you don't know how to get that money. Are you hearing me? But for the man who both has the interpretation of the dream and the ability to get it, that man has something on his life. When I was growing up, and I'm still growing in the things of God, for many years the Lord has taught me one thing. I've separated the two ministers. I've separated the minister that interprets dreams. And I've separated the minister from the minister who not only interprets but can interpret also the application of the dream on your spirit. Those are men which give the most distinctive impartation on your spirit. When you meet such men, give them all due honor because they know the way how. Some of you, the things you're suffering with and struggling to do in your dream, there are men who know how to apply. There are men who both can interpret what is in your spirit and can show you the way of applying it. But I've realized that every man I've seen in the history of the church with that level and ounce of glory and anointing, that man has been tested beyond the measure of many average men. And those testations are going to come. You remember the story of Israel when Israel was officially made a state. Six nations literally surrounding one nation. The, you, I, I had an opportunity to visit Israel last year when a state visit was and in the, the, they invited a few leaders from different countries and I, I was glad to go for our nation. And I look come on. Greater things. The, I I I, I this guy was explaining the plight of Israel. And he says, you don't know what it's like to be a nation that is favored. And you know you're favored by God. But you have six enemies and all of seven, all of them hate you. All of them hate you. Some of you saw what the United Nations did recently to that dear nation. More than what? 128 nations? All of them voted against all of them. And it's in Daniel, amazingly. The scripture is clear. For all nations shall turn against Israel. They shall turn against Jerusalem. They, they can't. You see, I, I wonder how Israel feels when they know that this is their land. It was given by God to them. And the whole world simply just can't give them what is theirs. And all of them feel they are right in their own eyes. Now, I was seated with this guy, and you could literally see his eyes want to weep. They are, they are wet with tears. And he's saying, we are hated by men around us. And we don't know how our children will be or how our children's children will be. Except that we have faith in the God who once ordained that Israel should stand as a nation. It's all they know. You go to Israel, and what they are reporting is not what's there. It's, it's, and that's the truth. It's funny. When you see Al Jazeera, BBC, what? When you go to Israel, the story is different. All bombs in Tel Aviv. They've, when you go there, it's different. Boys are playing on the streets. Men are driving cars, drinking coffee. You know, women picking children. It's, it's, you get my point. But when one nation is hated by the world and still in there, God still says no. No weapon. Shall prosper. And every tongue that raises against you, you shall condemn it. Let me tell you, 
if Israel wakes up and passes judgment on some nations, they would have trouble. The Greeks attacked them. We no longer speak Greek. The Roman Empire is down. The Byzantine Empire is down. The list is endless. Because God knows how to protect his own. You can go through a situation and feel you're alone, but I have good news for you. You're not alone. Greater is he which is in you than he that is in the world. You are more than a conqueror by Christ which strengthens you. And I'll tell you the truth. Israel will stand. That nation will stand. That nation will stand. Six nations wanted to destroy 365 or something men in Israel. But they couldn't. 300 men, 60 something, 360 something, could not be destroyed. Because God was on their side. Somebody say amen. So I have good news for you. Rest. Don't answer your critics. Keep on preaching the gospel. Keep on celebrating the spirit of glory and Christ that is resident on the inside of you. Keep on extending love and forgiveness for them that are unforgivable. When they hurt you, forgive and pray for them. Are you hearing me? And just look upon Jesus. A time will come and things are going to change. And you won't remember her name. Potiphar, you won't remember her name. Potiphar's wife, you won't remember it. In your time, the Lord will raise you. And at time appointed, there is going to be a bigger vindication. Moses did not vindicate Joseph by a rumor. He didn't say, me, they told me. No. Moses saw in the spirit. Somebody will see for you. Somebody say, amen. God will cause them to dream. Some of you, whatever, and I feel to tell you, whatever you felt as rejection, it's going to turn to your glorification in the name of Jesus. Can you thank God for that word tonight and tell him, God, I receive that word tonight. Speak in other tongues for two minutes. Speak in other tongues. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full on the full face And the things of us will grow strangely In the light of His glory and grace Come and speak to God in two minutes Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely in the light. Of His glory and grace, and the things of earth will grow strangely in the light of His glory and grace. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, if there is any word against you, I came by reason of the anointing. In Jesus' name to say, this too shall pass. Win. The Lord will not hand you over to the will of your enemies. If their manners, characters, and lessons to learn, the Lord will purge, teach you, restore you, get all that nonsense out of you and any ungodly habit and he will still continue with you for the son of God did not come to condemn you but that you might be saved through him the Lord loves you the Lord cares for you 
And the Lord is on your side always. And I pray that you never be on the side of accusers. Never be on the side of, side of persecutors. Never be on the side of men of mayhem and mischief. Never set yourself against the course of other against against the course of the gospel. Never fight another brother in the gospel. And I pray that for those that require vindication, let it come quickly and swiftly. May the Lord work things in you and that day will come as this and you remember these words. When the Lord has truly turned it around for your good. If you have fought and persecuted and accused falsely, the Lord forgives you. Walk another pattern now. I also want to pray for you tonight in the name of Jesus that something fall on your life that will both interpret dreams and the ability to execute and, 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 and draw applications for what is interpreted. In whatever may, uh, circumstances and situations you're in, may God cause Pharaoh to dream. A dream that only you can interpret. And when that dream is interpreted, the whole world will eat bread. And it will bring the restoration of your own brethren. That's why Joseph says that I forgive thee for weep not. For the Lord sent me ahead for you to preserve thee a posterity. There's a bigger picture of what you're going through. Never make it personal, I pray. And if you're hurting, may God heal. And if it is to come one day, may you remember these words. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. If you have never given your life to Jesus and you want to become born again tonight, put up your hand and come and receive Jesus tonight. So those of you want to become born again, please come here. And then we'll lead you in a confession prayer. And the is over. Of his glory and oh, greatest miracle. Turn your eyes. Stand here. Those of you who have come to receive Jesus, come and stand here. Look for this wonderful face and the thing. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong God, perfect plea, a great high priest, name is love. Whoever lives and lives for me, whoever lives and lives for me, my name is Graven on his hand. Be 
Lord Jesus, tonight I receive you as Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for my sins and you were raised for my glorification. Tonight, I'm a new creation. The old is past, and now the new. I'm born again. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.